Oh, I just love tournament football. Um, it is almost midnight. I have just got in. I am sunburn or windburn from being in South End all day. I am an emotional wreck. I am over the moon that we have just won on penalties and I am furious and angry at how badly we played. But we're through. We're into another major semi-final and my overarching emotions right now are you don't have to like how Gareth Southgate plays. You don't have to be happy with the performance of the players on the pitch. But you have to respect it and you have to believe in it because it takes some real balls to take all that amount of criticism that Gareth Southgate has received over the course of the last two weeks and go, no, I am going to stick with it. I am going to stick with it because this is what I believe is best. And like I say, I don't like it. I can't stand it. I think it's so painful to watch. And every single time I go into an England game, I think we're going to lose because of how we play. But you can't argue with the results. It's a third semi-final in four tournaments. It's four semi-finals in six tournaments if you include the Nations Leagues. It works. It does get us over the line. And the point is, is that I do believe in these players. I really do. And I got questioned by my mates at the end of the last 16 game. I've been questioned by my mates tonight because I've seen people I care about give up on England on two matches in a row. But I never gave up. And they've questioned me for not giving up. And I don't know if it's the sheer desperation I have for England to win. I don't know if it's being brought up watching Manchester United or watching things like Pokemon and Naruto on TV. I just don't have it in me to give up on this team. At no point do I ever think we're actually going to lose. And we do just keep producing the results that we need. And this is my point. You have to respect it, even if you don't like it, because I can't stand it. But you have to respect it. Because it is getting us the results that we need. I said after the last friendly, we won't get out of the group. I didn't think that we'd get out of the group, but I still believe that we could. We won the group. I then said we had no chance of beating the Netherlands in the last 16. Firstly, we then didn't even end up playing them because we got the luck of playing against Slovakia. I then sat here on my predictions and said that we wouldn't beat Slovakia. But I still believe that we would beat Slovakia. Granted, I got the 1-1 prediction right, but then we beat them in extra time. This morning, when I woke up, you would have seen by my prediction, I was so in belief that we were going to win this game today, that I said we'd beat them 2-0 and we'd probably beat them by more. That was pure belief. That was not my thoughts. That was not me going, realistically, we're going to win this game 2-0, 3-0. No. No. That was my pure belief and passion for this country playing football that I really thought we genuinely could do that. But obviously I got a bit carried away. My general thought process was that we would struggle. We did struggle, but they dug in. As I quick for said after the game, they got in the trenches again. They fought for everything and they got the result by winning it on penalties. And I'm going to sit here right now and I'm going to tell you, I don't think we'll beat Holland this time. But I believe we can beat Holland. I don't think if we beat Holland, we'll beat Spain or France. But I believe that we can. So that would be my message to anyone watching this right now. Even if you don't like it, believe in it. Get behind this team. Every time they make a block, celebrate it like a goal. Every time they make a last ditch tackle, celebrate it like a goal. Every time Pickford makes a save, celebrate it like it's a goal. Because they're not going to change. They are not going to change from this mindset. Gareth Southgate has the arrogance. He has the belief in his own tactics that this is the way that we are going to win this tournament. So it is our responsibility as England fans to believe in it as well. So that would be my message. I'm not going to suggest compromises anymore. I'm beyond compromises. Like I said, it drives me mad. I was so frustrated. It's why my voice is so shot. I spent the whole 120 minutes shouting above probably 100 people in the pub that I was with, 
screaming at all the things that weren't happening the way I would have liked them to happen. But I'm not going to compromise it on it anymore because the results are there. We won again. We won on penalties. The tactics worked. We held them out. We forced them to penalties. And with the world-class penalty takers that we have, we dispatched them. So fair play. Well done. What I will do instead is share my thoughts on what I think could be improved and what I think is our potential issues that may be needed to be looked at. I'm not going to say here and say, you must do this, you must do that. This is wrong. This shouldn't be happening. These are just now my notes on things that I have noticed. Number one, in my opinion, as someone who is not in the England camp and is watching as a football fan and is no medical expert whatsoever, Harry Kane is not fit. He is not fit. He is not putting himself about anywhere near as much as he usually does or anywhere near as much as he needs to. He was so dead that he substituted himself via nearly spearing Gareth Southgate into the subs bench in what would have been one of the best things I've ever seen in my life, full Boris Johnson style. But sadly, he missed by half an inch. But he was so dead, Harry Kane, that when he plopped in front of Gareth Southgate, he didn't get back up. He should not be playing a significant amount of time. I don't know if it's the back injury. I don't know what it is. But in my opinion, he is knackered. And I just would not like to see him in the next game. Secondly, Kieran Trippier, or Trippier, because I keep calling him French as I was called out in the comments, Kieran Trippier. For me, it's just not working for him at left back, left wing back. If Luke Shaw is available to start, which I hope and I pray that Luke Shaw is available to start, he needs to start. Once he came onto the pitch, we looked so much better. And granted, we were having to go for it because we'd just conceded. But him being on the left-hand side of the pitch, having a left footer at left back, we just looked so much more balanced. And the runs he was making overlapping Ezra were fantastic, creating the angles, everything that we've been missing from Trippier when he's been playing at left back. So I hope and I pray that Luke Shaw is available to start. Thirdly, Jude Bellingham takes too many touches. Have a word with him. I wouldn't not play him because he is a phenomenal player. But Jude Bellingham takes far too many touches. And I don't know if that's what he does for Real Madrid because I've only seen him play in the odd Champions League game this season. I don't sit and watch Real Madrid games. So I don't see Jude Bellingham week in, week out. And I never saw him play for Dortmund again outside of Champions League games because I don't sit and watch the Bundesliga every single week. So I don't know if this is just how Bellingham plays. But when you've got that amount of quality around you, he takes too long. It's like watching Sterling where he just jitters and he jitters and he jitters and he loses it. Get your head up, pick out Foden, pick out Saka, pick out Kane. If there's nothing on, give it back to Rice. Don't do two or three dummies and then try a shot and then lose it. He just needs a little bit of a word, a little bit of a talking to. Just say, Jude, we know how good you are, but you don't have to do everything by yourself. Use the other players you've got around you. Those would be my only things I would like to see improved going into the next game. Because honestly, I didn't mind what I saw in terms of the actual players on the pitch and even some of the style of play. It was frustrating to see so many sideways and backwards passes. It was frustrating to see that team dropping back. But ultimately, I still think this was probably our best performance of the tournament so far. And the reason I can say that is because there were some actual good performances from players out there. I thought Kobe Mainu was fantastic again. And final criticism of Gareth Southgate's tactics. Stop taking Mainu off. He's so influential in that midfield. Don't take him off. Yes, you want to bring the likes of Palmer on. And you want to leave Foden on. But ultimately, Phil Foden didn't really do a lot in that game. And Kobe Mainu was doing loads. Let Mainu play. Let him flourish. Next to him, Declan Rice was outstanding. And I hope Declan Rice gets some plaudits because he deserves them. I know Bakaya Saka is going to get the majority of the plaudits for this game. And rightfully so, and we'll get to him shortly. But Declan Rice was outstanding today. I don't think Rice has had a very good tournament, but he has stepped it up. 
in these two knockout games. He was brilliant against Slovakia. He was brilliant today. And obviously he got the assist for Saka's goal as well. Also, Esri Konsa coming into the back line for the suspended Mark Gahey. Great performance from him as well. Fair play to him for coming in at a massive pressure game and doing that job for us. Then, of course, we obviously have to talk about Bakayo Saka, who was the man of the match in that game from minute one. He looked like he had Abisha's number and he actually ended up playing Abisha off the pitch. Now, obviously, Gareth Southgate's actual genius tactical decision was to still play 4-2-3-1, but when we didn't have the ball, Saka would come back on the Swiss wing back and then it would be a 5-4-1 or however you want to look at it. Brilliant. Genius. We play the exact same shape, but when we're defending, the right wing becomes a right wing back and the left back becomes a left wing back. Fair enough. Great tactical change. But you know what? It worked down that right-hand side and Saka got past his man so many times. And I think it was pretty inevitable that he was going to be the person that got us back into that match. He was our best player, like I say, for the entire game. And when he cut inside and he smacked that ball in the back of the net, best believe every single person I was with went ballistic. And like I say, the only disappointment is off the back of that goal, we never pressed our advantage. Like you look at the Dutch performance this evening where they got their equaliser and then pushed on even more and got their winner. We didn't do that. We got our equaliser and went, awesome, we've got our equaliser. Let's go back to what we had been told to do. Let's sit in. Let's make sure we don't concede again and make sure the worst case scenario, it goes to a penalty shootout. Final two things to add. Bakaya Saka can't play left wing back. Absolutely not. That change that was made in the last five minutes to put Trent on at right back, this is why I'm still focusing on Saka. The change made to put Trent on at right wing back for the last five minutes with the assumption, I'm assuming, for him to take a penalty, which obviously he scored and brilliant penalty from Trent. When we put Trent at right wing back and Saka at left wing back and moved Ezra from left wing back to left wing, we conceded an awful lot of chances and Switzerland nearly won the game because Saka was at left wing back and he wasn't doing the job anywhere near as good as what Eze was beforehand. And you know what? Fair play for the second game running for Eberici Eze coming on at left wing back and putting in a genuinely good shift at left wing back. So if we're going to be doing that and we're going to be looking to play Trent at right wing back or however he wants to do it, don't put Saka on the left. He's made it perfectly clear he's not very good out there. And what I saw in those last five minutes confirmed he's not very good out there. But obviously what I'm hoping is, like we said, Gahey comes back in and Luke Shaw goes to left wing back. And that's how we play in the semi-final. Shaw at left wing back, Saka at right wing back, or Trippier or Trent at right wing back. Honestly, potentially take Foden out the side and put Saka further forward. If you do that, I think we've got a good chance. And then secondly, on the goal that we actually did concede, John Stones, clear your lines. Like, I don't know why no one's talking about it. Everyone was talking about how it came because we were sitting so deep and this, that and the other. Just clear it. Why does he stick his leg out but like lift it in the air so he tries to like control it? What would have actually happened if he'd have stopped it the way he was trying to stop it? There was a Swiss striker coming in on him anyway. Like, just clear the ball. I was really frustrated at that. I thought Stone should have done a lot better on the goal, but... That's a minor complaint as far as I'm concerned because obviously the good news is, is that we did respond to conceding. It's just a shame that we then did obviously sit back after we did get the equaliser. And then finally, I guess we should talk about the penalties themselves because we have just won on penalties and that is something to be absolutely celebrated. But at the same time, I think we should be expecting to win on penalties because we have world-class penalty takers in that team. I expected Cole Palmer to score. I expected Ivan Tony to score. I expected Bakaya Saka to score. I expected Trent to score. If Declan Rice stepped up, I expected Declan Rice to score. The only one I was a little bit worried about was Bellingham. And calmest man in the stadium, did a little stutter, sent the goalkeeper the wrong way. So, fantastic job on the penalties. Clearly, they know what they're doing when it comes to penalty shootouts. And Jordan Pickford, once again, 
did his job to the best of his abilities, made one really good save, was unfortunately too short for Shakiri's shot, but I'm not going to have a go at that. The ball still went in the side netting, and I think it would have taken a hell of a save to save that. So brilliant, brilliant for England once again to win another penalty shootout, trying to put that history to bed of us being so poor at penalties. And I'm so pleased that we have won another penalty shootout because it's given me that lift that I needed after what was a very frustrating game. And I guess all that is left to say now is my final thoughts about going in to the Holland game on Wednesday night. And as I say, I still think that we'll lose because I don't like the style of play, but I believe in it. I believe in this team and I genuinely believe that we can still win this tournament. We're in the semi-finals again. Keep saying those three magic words. Keep playing your three Lions. Keep playing your Vindaloos. And back this team. Keep believing because we're just two matches away from history once again. Come on, England. Let's get it done.